What if I told you that there are special places in the ocean where thousands of fish come together at a certain time each year? These fish, which spend most of their time alone or in small groups, make an epic journey to come together to reproduce or spawn. This is really cool, right? Except, of course, if the majority of those reproducing fish were all caught at the same time. Not cool. Coral reefs around the world are homes to thousands of fish species. Many of these species travel from far and wide at very specific times and places each year to gather together to form spawning aggregations that can contain hundreds or even thousands of fish. When and where these spawning aggregations occur depends on the species. Scientists are currently studying which physical and biological properties, such as the rise and slope of the seafloor, the habitat types present, and the movement of currents, are required for a spawning aggregation site to be successful. These sites might be used by just one species of fish or by multiple species of fish, but at different times of the year. For example, some groupers spawn during the winter, while some snappers spawn at the same location during the summer. The predictable nature of these aggregations makes these fish prime targets for fishers. Historically, there were many more spawning aggregations, but many have disappeared. If the population of one of these fish aggregations is completely removed, that aggregation may never recover. Scientists are still learning how these fish know exactly where to go to spawn, but one possible explanation is that younger fish learn by following older fish. So if there's a remnant of the population left, with time, recovery may be possible. One of these special places exists off of Florida and provides a great example of such a recovery. Riley's Hump, located about 70 miles west of Key West, was historically known as a very productive spawning aggregation site, but it was also open to fishing. In the late 1990s, many people had noticed that there were fewer and fewer fish. In 2001, a no-take marine reserve was placed around Riley's Hump and the surrounding waters. FWC scientists, along with their research partners, monitored the number of mutton snappers seen there during spawning season. It took several years, but scientists started observing an increase in mutton snapper present at Riley's Hump during spawning season. Then, in 2009, after eight years of protection, mutton snapper spawning returned to Riley's Hump. But Riley's Hump is not just a mutton snapper success story. As scientists from different agencies worked together, they discovered that other fish species use this area throughout the year. And by protecting this site year-round, these reproducing fish can go on about their business without worry. The benefits of protecting this spawning aggregation area extend outside its borders, affecting marine ecosystems hundreds of miles away. Fish larvae, represented here by the red dots, are carried by the currents away from the spawning site, giving juvenile fishes the chance to settle well beyond Riley's hump. Keeping this spawning aggregation site active serves as a great insurance policy for Florida's fisheries. As we learn more about this one special place, it makes us realize how important it is to protect more of these spawning aggregation sites to continue to have healthy fish populations for future generations to enjoy.